Well, looking at the fixed income, it seems that some calm has returned uh, to the markets. Uh, run us through the activity and uh, what you're making of what we're seeing play out there. Uh, morning, Alicia. Um, I think to some extent this could be the calm before the storm. Um, in the last few weeks, we've seen um, relative stability in those markets. Um, the 20-year yield is still around 11.5, and um, I think the three-year is about 7.3. Um, the key thing to look, look towards is the fact that um, in the next three months, we expect an increase in the amount that um, the government is going to issue. In t um, the amount of bonds that the government is going to issue, this we expect is to meet the deficit that yet, that is yet to be funded. There's a deficit of about 800 billion plus that needs to be funded, and this is going to be funded out of um, the fixed income market and the money market. In specifics, we expect that um, an additional 50, or 50 to 70 billion in bonds will be issued in the next three, each, each of the next three months. Well, not only on the local arena, we've heard news filtered through that Nigeria hopes to launch its planned $500 million debut global bond by the end of the no November. What have you made of that, uh, that move and that announcement? Because it comes at a time when there's still very big question marks when it comes to the global economic playing field. Well, to be honest, this has been something that's been on the table for a while now. In fact, it's been on the table for almost two years now. And um, it's something that the government has always wanted to do. In the past, it had been an issue of timing. The timing wasn't right. But um, I think right now would be a good time to do it because the expectation on the dollar um, interest rates is that in the short, in the medium to long, um, long run, we might see yields on dollar go up. So this might be a good time for them to raise the funding. I think it's a good thing, and um, it would be good if it could be finalized before the end of the year. Do you see any challenges being posed uh, to this where we've got investors, yes, chasing yield in a very uncertain market? Certainly we've seen a lot of cash coming into South Africa's bond market specifically, but uh, do you foresee any hurdles that uh, the government would have to jump in this regard? Well, I don't really think it will be much of a problem considering um, the international debt levels of Nigeria as a, com as a, co as a country. Currently, um, in relative terms, Nigeria has very low international debt. And I think um, it would be something that most international investors would be looking to invest in. Even locally, there would be a significant um, patronage from local asset managers and investors. So, yes, it's a difficult time to um, raise the issue, but the fact that it's uh, um, sovereign debt, that mm. should um, cover for some of the challenges. Of course, this is in a context where there's much burden on the fiscus right now. I mean, we were speaking about the situation that's unfolding in Mozambique a little earlier on in the show, but also in Nigeria, petrol subsidies uh, mounts in Nigeria as well, and that's going to be placing additional burden on the fiscus moving forward. How are you seeing that situation unfold? Well, as we speak, there's um, there talks about um, a petroleum reform in Nigeria. This has been um, a lot of work has gone into this. And the expectation is that um, probably next year we would have that reform. In effect, what the reform will do would be it will significantly privatize the sector and remove some of the government subsidies that are in place. So it's actually something that is being looked at. And um, I can say for sure that the government do realize the strain that the subsidy has on the economy for them and their mm -hmm. deficit financing. So, I think we should look towards after the election and see how that plays out. Let's wrap up, Solo, with uh, an outlook from your end when it comes to currency movements as we head into next week. What's your outlook where we have seen uh, the Nigerian Naira weaken quite considerably of late? Well, in the last two weeks, we saw um, significant demand um, for the dollar against the Naira, and we saw significant depreciation of the Naira. But what the central bank had done in the last week was they've pumped in over $700 million, which has, again, strengthened Naira. We saw an appreciation of about 23 Kobo last week. Um, I think what we, ex what we should see in the short run would be we'll be back to the stability of the range of um, 
150 to 151 levels. Um, towards the end of the year, we may see some um, demand come up again, and this would be on the back of um, foreign portfolio investors who want to close out their positions before next year's election. But in the long run, I expect that we wouldn't cross the 150 le 151 levels.